welcome to today's uh, session you're talking about divine calling and uh, why it is very important to understand God's purpose for your life there is nothing more important than that remember that there are two days that are very important in the life of a human being and the first one is the day he was born the second important day is the day he discovers why he was born and um, purpose makes you focus your energy in the right direction understanding your purpose helps you to fulfill your calling helps you to please god and many other things as you shall uh, understand today so just know that uh, god knows and um, has designed you to fulfill some purpose and uh, he is there to to help you overcome any challenge and reach your expected end god has a plan for you and the devil also has an evil plan for you so what happens is that uh, if you do not understand god's plan you begin to um, meandering in your life and fulfilling the works of the devil god wants you to fulfill his purposes and not just uh, waste time on earth if god desires that you manifest his glory as you fulfill your purposes your purpose is a small thing is a small way in which you fulfill kingdom purposes on earth and it is very very important to not only to identify it but to commit all your energy all your resources and focus on fulfilling it so what is the divine calling divine calling as you have said is go very unique to you everybody has a different calling <clears throat> no two people are exactly the same and this is something that god has given to you so that you can fulfill it uh, on earth remember you are the manifestation of god god created us in his image and likeness so that we could be his representatives on earth here so you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation god's special possession that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light to do his purposes so it's important to identify your calling pray that god may reveal it to you also through reflection and um, thinking about the things that you are passionate about your talents and experiences can help you identify the area of your calling your life always gravitates towards your calling and your passions your passions could be a great indicator of your calling because your passions are things that you easily you can you, you like and you can easily do comfortably and much better than any other person because they're natural talents so that's part of your of your calling and uh, what you can do is that commit to the lord whatever you do and so that he can establish it ensure that you're always committing to the lord your plans so that you don't derail but you fulfill purpose and your calling it is important to continue growing in your calling seek knowledge and skills related related to your calling by continuously learning and surround yourself with a community of of believers and also professionals in your area so that they can sharpen you for iron sharpens iron always desire to fulfill and serve in the kingdom of god those who serve are the greatest so the kingdom of god is a kingdom of servants and servers so and we need to challenge each other for good works yes yeah, so, and we need to serve others in patience trust god's timing as you wait on god wait on god and be of good courage as you grow in your calling you be patient you serve you may not be paid in the initial stages but you are being mentored and um, 
after you have perfected your giftings and talents, then your gift will bring you before great men. So your gift has the power and ability to attract great people, including even a spouse to you. That's why the only way we can show up in life is by excelling in our calling and our giftings so that we can not only be useful to society but also earn a living, be accepted and also be preserved. So the, as I've said, it is very important to walk in your divine calling. Uh, when you walk in your divine calling, you are pleasing to God, your life is pleasing to God. There's also personal fulfillment in uh, finding and uh, also fulfilling your purpose. There are many other rewards, like especially the three rewards of riches, honor and life. When you are fulfilling purpose and serving others, there is provision. People will reward you, will pay you for solving problems and also God will ensure that there is provision because you are part of his kingdom and the kingdom of agenda. As long as you are part of kingdom agenda, provision is assured because nobody sends soldiers to war without providing for them. So God will also provide for you, you destiny helpers including a spouse as long as you are committed to fulfilling your divine mandate. There's honor in being great, in being skilled and uh, excelling. When you are an adult, you need to be very having something that you are doing that people can look up to you, depend on you to fulfill and to solve. And there's honor that comes with that. And also in life, there is preservation longevity as long as you are serving God's purposes God will ensure that you are protected the people will also provide for you and people will always um, ensure that if you are doing something good they continue supporting you the universe will be there to support you and to increase you so God tests us before promotion uh, including uh, getting a spouse as we shall see, Adam, Moses, and Rebecca, and Ruth, they were tested to show that uh, they are in the right path before God brought a helper. Anytime a helper comes when you are still not sure of who you are, you, mo you are most likely going to attract a wrong spouse or frustrate your spouse. They don't know how they're going to help you because you have not yet understood who you are and you have not yet entered into your purpose it's very important that you find your purpose and get into doing it uh, so when you develop yourself in your purpose including character uh, developing your character you improve chances of getting the right person that can also help you in life like Adam case in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 to 24 when God created Adam and placed him in the Garden of Eden, Adam was given the task of naming animals and demonstrating his role in caring and having authority over the created world. <coughs> so after Adam named the animals, God saw that it was not good for him to be alone. He now needed more help so that he can be more productive. So he went, he was tired and also went into deep sleep and from him God removed Eve, who is a helper. So help comes for those who are moving, who are on the move, who are on the go, who are on obedience to God. So God presents Eve to Adam, and Adam recognizes her as bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh. Adam recognizes that this is a helper that God has provided so that he can continue fulfilling the multiplication the increase and the dominion mandate that he was given so continue doing what you need to do and there will be provision there will be blessings so another person we find in the old testament is moses he after killing an egyptian and me who was mistreating a, an israelite moses fled to from egypt to, to escape pharaoh's wrath 
and the Arab in the land of the Midianites. And uh, when you are sat seated next to a well, one of the daughters of uh, Jethro is called Zipporah. There was a priest of the Midian came to the well to water her father's flock. The shepherds at the well were preventing Zipporah and her sisters from watering their flock, but Moses intervened and helped them. That's in Exodus 2, 16 to 17. And because of that, there was favor in Moses' life. He was invited to Jethro's house. And um, be, when uh, Jethro heard that this man, Moses, is responsible enough to protect his um, daughter, he was handed the daughter as a wife. So anytime you are tested and you pass the test, you are going to get into promotion. So don't run away from the tests and the trials. They are stepping stones for your promotion. So if you are hoping and waiting for a spouse, and be careful with them, anything that is happening around you, ensure that you are faithful, ensure that you are demonstrating the traits of a spouse before you enter into the spouse, before you, you get that spouse. Before you enter into that office, ensure that you have demonstrated the competencies for that office. Because promotion comes when we grow. And if you do remain the same, there will a child you can never be promoted to perform a function that is only for adults. So if you are expecting to be a wife, you must first of all have the traits and the qualities of a wife before you are found for bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing meaning that this lady even before marriage she has the qualities of a wife ensure that you are kind you are supportive you understand how to submit to authority you are collaborative you are not argumentative lazy careless and disorganized so like rebecca was found favor while watering the camels See, Abraham had requested Eliza, his chief servant, to get a wife for Isaac from the native land. That is Genesis chapter 24, verse 1 to 9. So the servant took the ten camels, loaded them with gifts, and set out to for Mesopotamia, the city of Nahor, Abraham's brother. At the well outside the city, he prayed for a specific sign that the woman who offered to water his camels and also offered him a drink would be the chosen one. So he found Rebecca, a young woman from Abraham's relatives. She came to the well and the servant asked her for a drink and she not only gave him a drink but also offered to draw water for his camels. This act of kindness fulfilled the servant's sign and he learned that the servant signed and he learned that she was the granddaughter of Nahor, Abraham's brother. So the servant then gave Rebecca gifts and inquired about her family. And on learning that, the, what happened is that Rebecca be, was chosen to become Isaac's wife because she was kind, she was caring, she was generous, and she was a responsible person. So one of the things that makes you very attractive for a spouse is when you are kind, you are generous, and you are um, offering help, meaning that you are growing in your calling and in your purpose. Being a wife is a role for nurturing, a role for watering, for giving, for refreshing, bringing comfort. So Rebecca passed the test with flying colors, and she was promoted from Miss Single to Mrs. Isaac very key to see how you treat people around you begin to treat people with kindness begin to operate like the level where you want to go so and the key the most important one is Ruth her, she had um, a marriage that had collapsed after the death of her husband but God was able to restore her marriage because she was kind to Ruth. So Ruth, as she was kind to Naomi, when um, the Naomi is uh, the mother-in-law 
who also had lost her husband. She was old, and uh, Ruth and Oprah had also lost their spouses. Now Orpah re decided to remain in uh, Moab, but Naomi decided to support the mother-in-law who was aged and did not have anybody to help her. And so because she became a helper, she began to learn the ways of the Lord. God used that opportunity of her be having a good heart to transform her from becoming a Moabite to enter the commonwealth of Israel, to become a partaker of Abraham's blessing. And because she committed herself to be a helper, she was promoted and became a a, a wife to Boaz and um, a distant relative of um, Jesus. So understand that because of being kind, because operating as though she was already a wife, being kind, being caring, nurturing and protecting others, God ensured that there is promotion for her. Anytime you are in the period of waiting, ensure that you are developing in the competencies for the calling and for the purposes that God wants you to do. Do not just sit there pretty waiting for things to happen. Begin to develop, begin to grow. Because when you reach that level of growth that is desired, God will definitely promote you and bring a spouse and anything else that you need. So gonna, what is, um, we're going to discuss the three components of uh, uh, your calling. One is the office. Office is the purpose for why, why you are created. You may be created to be a king, but if you do not have other qualities of your calling, like the grace and the gifting, then you may not operate well in the office. You may end up being powerless, ineffective, or being dethroned from your office. Like um, the case of Vashti was supposed to be the queen of the king, but because she lacked the graces of uh, humility, meekness, and submission, she was removed, ejected from the office, and somebody else placed there. So be having an office is a privilege, it's not a right, and we need now to understand how to function and operate in the office. Remember, many are called, but few are chosen. Why are few chosen? Because they choose, they develop the graces and they operate in the giftings that God has given them. So the first important thing is the office which you aspire to join. And for you to be there, you develop the graces. These are positive attributes that help you to sustain that office. It may be having like the mind of Christ who came and uh, because of being meek, because of being submitted, he was able to fulfill the purpose of dying on the cross. There's meekness, there's knowledge and understanding. You need to have more knowledge, understanding in the area of your calling. When you lack depth and breadth in the knowledge of your calling, then you're going to function this money in your calling. God expects you to be very knowledgeable and to continue growing in your knowledge and in wisdom because only a wise woman is able to build her home but a foolish one will destroy it with her own hands and only a knowledgeable person who is able to live with a wife with understanding. So you have to develop the knowledges, the understanding to, that will sustain you in your office. We also have the other component of your calling, which is gifts. And these are the natural things that God gives you that you don't need to work so much on them. It could be your beauty, your gender. Like you can be called, you, for you to be a husband, you need to have the gender of a man. So that one you're given, you need to be a man. That one you're given without you doing anything. So it does not take any effort to become a man, a male, but to be a husband, you need to nurture the graces, patience, and love, sacrificial love, and many other things. So gifts can be an indicator of where your calling is. If you have the gender of a female, you have been blessed to be a female with all the beauty 
that could be an indicator that you are supposed to operate in the office of a wife. Remember the story of Esther? They told her that you have been brought here for such a time as this. She had, she was very beautiful. She was chosen among many other ladies. But God says that there was a purpose in her beauty, in the giftings that God gave her. The purpose was to be a deliverer of the people of God. So your giftings are supposed to help you function in your office. So examples of office could be you may be called to be a businessman, a farmer, an engineer, a doctor, a pastor, a teacher. <clears throat> also a husband is an office, a wife is an office, and uh, even God is an office. So all callings are geared towards solving a problem for humanity and the kingdom of God. So a good spouse helps us fulfill our calling and a bad one fights and frustrates us, uh, hindering us to fulfill our calling. So when you get a, a toxic partner, she or he becomes a prayer point instead of being your prayer partner. It's very dangerous when you have an evil person and not, you, you don't have, um, uh, you, you choose a wrong partner, you, be, you get a prayer point. They become a prayer point, they, they drain your energy. The energy you're supposed to be spending fulfilling your purpose, you spend most of it time wasting and also um, trying to fight with them, trying to, to put out some fires which is not necessary. So ensure that um, you get somebody who is going to help you fulfill your calling. And it's very easy to know who can help you by looking at the graces. Their graces and giftings should be complementary to your office. So grace, the most, um, the graces that you can look for is the mind. The graces include the wisdom, and also the mind of Christ, this, the nature of Jesus Christ. So we need to have that mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the one that loves people, wants to serve, wants to make a positive impact in other people's life because we are created to serve others. So a relationship is a lab that shows how much Christ has worked on us, how much of the nature of Christ we are able to reveal. The more Christ is developed in us, the better we become at um, serving others because we shall have humility, there shall be meekness, that we shall be merciful, and uh, we shall have unconditional love, and we shall be selfless, as uh, the Bible teaches. So uh, I'll focus on the meek partner. One of the things that makes a partner very nice is the nature of meekness. When they operate in the grace of meekness, Moses was the meekest person and that's why he was able to lead the children of Israel from captivity and bondage into freedom. Because meekness allows you to bear with others. Meekness allows you to have the power but under control so that you do not destroy other people and you do not act very fast, you are, you do not seek revenge or hold grudges, but you rather display a spirit of mildness and gentleness as you deal with people. And people in um, intimate relationships, there is going to be a big need for you to be meek, so for you to survive and also to have an impact. So meekness is often associated with strength under control, where an individual exercises self-discipline and restraint in difficult situations. So Jesus is also described as meek. The Bible teaches the value of meekness as a positive characteristic. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So if you see people who have been married for 20, 30 years, then there is meekness that has been involved there so they will be blessed and receive god's favor because 
you cannot receive God's blessing and favor without being a meek person. So another thing is being merciful, a trait that will make you fulfill your purpose because you must understand your purpose is about serving others. Because all of us, whether you are called an apostle, an engineer, a doctor, the end, the end game is a good and faithful servant. We shall be told in the end, welcome good and faithful servant. You are supposed to be a servant and you cannot serve without being merciful. So a merciful partner brings qualities such as forgiveness, compassion, support and positive outlook, which are essential for creating a strong and lasting relationship. The ability to extend grace and kindness contributes to a relationship that is built on understanding, acceptance, and the ability to navigate the complexities of life together. So you need to be merciful. And also there's a concept of easy, because those are the graces that help you in uh, achieving your function, meaning that you come with the giftings and the graces to help other people. So Ezra is the name that it describes God and also describes the woman. So Eze is a Hebrew word used in the Bible to describe the role of a wife as a helper or companion. And also the name Ebenezer of God is the Eze, he is the helper. So it does not mean subordination but emphasizes a supportive and complementary role in relationship. So you need to embody the qualities of an Eze to be able to help and strengthen relationship. Don't just be taking from people, but you need to be contributing and supporting because we are called to support and to build other people. So an as a partner is very supportive. They share responsibilities. They share, they have emotional intimacy. They bring companionship. They are very supportive. Yes, always desire to be a, an as a partner. So they encourage and empower their partner to pursue their goals and dreams. This mutual support creates an environment where both individuals can thrive and achieve personal fulfillment. Effective communication is essential in any relationship and as encourages in open and honest communication, expressing needs, concerns and aspirations which helps in building mutual understanding and resolving conflicts. So there's problem solving, a partner that can problem solve. Those are some of the graces that help you in, uh, in fulfilling your calling. Because in your calling, you'll be relating with other people. You need to know how to solve problems, how to share goals and values, and how to align your goals, values to create a strong foundation for your relationship. There needs to be flexibility and adaptability because life is very dynamic. Relationships require flexibility. So an essay adapts to changes, embraces challenges, and works alongside the partner to navigate the ups and downs of relationships. So when you are in your calling, you will deal with many people, especially whether it is a um, marriage, or it is your place of work, it requires that you have, you develop the graces, the required graces, including having the mind of Christ, so that you can be able to solve problems easily. So as we conclude, remember that um, Adam was able to get a spouse after naming the animals and being faithful in his place of calling. The same with Rebecca got favor, because she was generous and she was able to give, bring water for the camels and the servant of Abraham, who was Eliezer. If she never became generous, it is very unlikely that she would have become the, the, husband, the wife of uh, Isaac and also the mother of Jacob and the nation of Israel. It would not be possible without developing the, the competencies of generosity, kindness. And Ruth also the same thing. Ruth was a Moabite who was disqualified by being born outside Israel. But because of her generosity, 
her developing the nature of God and following and obeying her mother-in-law, she qualified to be in the lineage of Jesus. She qualified to get a second chance of um, getting married to Boaz and um, getting into the lineage of Jesus. She, ha she has been immortalized by her action of choosing to grow and become a useful member of society. So your purpose and calling informs who can be a suitable helper. Each individual should be actively engaged in their God-given purposes and daily activities. This commitment leads to personal development as, and is showcased in one's character and virtues. As you wait for your life partner, keep growing and winning by the plot. Uh, go for the second degree, continue developing yourself. Your progress in life is very attractive and magnetic. The principles the principle here is that living out one's calling often involves displaying positive characteristics that can make a person more attractive to a potential spouse who values these qualities. Because now God saw in Ruth uh, nice qualities of a generous and kind person and so God chose Boaz to come into her life to redeem her and also become part of the lineage of Jesus Christ our Savior. So anytime we are kind, we grow, we develop, we want to serve others, God will always give us more grace because God gives grace to the humble who are willing to serve, who are willing to grow and learn how to become better people and change. So they always desire to obey God by serving in the specific area that he has called you because there are so many blessings that come with that. God bless you so much. If you have any questions, you can leave it down in the comments below. And uh, see you next time as we continue in the School of Marriage Fitness.